Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to protect your raised bed or in-ground bed and extend your season a little bit deeper into the winter or how to plant earlier in the spring. Now, if you live in a mild climate and think maybe this video isn't for you, I don't need any kind of winter protection, think again. This structure that I'm gonna be building can also be used for shade cloth if you wanna keep your peppers from sun scald. It can also be used for brassicas or squash to keep the squash bugs, squash vine borer, the cabbage white butterfly. All those things can be used with this same structure by simply replacing the plastic with bird or insect netting or shade cloth. About a year and a half ago, I filmed a course for the School of Traditional Skills. It was a course on raised bed gardening, and I built this raised bed part as a part of that course. Um, and I also built a small hoop house over it. Well, that hoop house has lasted through uh, a really hot summer, a really cold, rainy winter, and another hot summer. And the plastic was getting a little bit brittle. So I took it off and I'm gonna rebuild that for you on camera so you can see how to make one of these on your raised bed. You can also use the same design for an in-ground bed. So this bed happens to be four feet by eight feet and I think it's about eight inches tall. Uh, it could be any height, uh, it could be any width or length, you'll just have to adjust the measurements. Now I have a full list of materials uh, down below in the video description. And that is for a four by eight bed. But again, this same idea can work on just about any size bed there is. So I'm not gonna go over each individual uh, part and how many there are. You can find that again down in the video description. Now, if you wanna make a simple raised bed like the one here, um, I'm gonna link that video down in the video description as well, showing you how to do that. And I'll also link it at the end of this video. So the first thing you need to do is to make a frame with two by fours on top of the existing bed that is the same outer dimensions. Now, if there's one thing that I would change about this design, and I'm actually gonna change it right now, it would be the corners. Uh, I actually kind of toenailed them in with three inch screws at an angle, but over the last year and a half, raising and lowering and just with weather, um, they've gotten a little bit loose. So to strengthen those, I went and bought some L brackets and I'm gonna be putting those in the corner with some one and five eighths inch coated screws. If you have drip irrigation in here, you wanna make sure that instead of having the hose or tube come over the bed, you want to drill a hole through the side of the bed and have it come in through that way. That way it's not gonna get smashed in the raising and lowering of the roof. So when you're framing this out, you wanna make sure that the longest two by fours are on the outside and they're sandwiching the end two by fours between them. The next thing we're gonna add are the PVC end caps. And the first thing you wanna do is pre-drill a hole in the bottom on all six of them. You're gonna drill one in each of the inside corners and one in about the center of the long sides. So the next thing you're gonna do is cut your PVC pipe. This is half inch PVC into 12 16 inch sections. These measurements are for a four by eight bed. Now mine are already a bit curved because they've been put together, but we're gonna do this the same way. We're gonna start on one end. We're gonna put this down into the end cap, and then we're gonna use a T, and we're gonna put that T on with this piece facing down that way. Then we're gonna put another one in there and then another T. I'm gonna run around this side and we're gonna put another one in there. And then a T. And then one more piece. And the end of this one goes down into this end cap. So then at the end of the bed, you're gonna have an arch with all of the T's facing this way. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this end. Okay, now we've got two arches. Now we're gonna do the middle one and it's gonna be done the same way, except instead of T's, we're gonna use the X's. So pipe, X with these facing this way. I think you probably see where we're going with this, don't you? So 
So now we have three arches, the ones on the end, the T's facing the middle, and the one in the middle, the T's facing left and right. Now we're gonna take six pieces of half inch PVC and they're cut to about 44 and a half inches in length. And we're just gonna link these together. And you can use PVC glue. Um, however, I don't think it's necessary. This has not been glued and it stayed out here without coming apart for a year and a half. Now these have all been bent by the sun. If you use new pipe, it's gonna look a lot more perfect than this. But perfect or not, it's still gonna work. The next thing we're gonna use is our furring strips. And uh, these are just, these are about an inch by three quarters of an inch. They're called furring strips, so that's what you wanna look for. And we're gonna place them around the edge on the outside of the PVC end caps. Now you wanna make sure that you pre-drill your holes in these furring strips, because furring strips have a tendency to split when you drill a screw straight into them. So you just wanna make sure that they're perfectly framing the end caps of the uh, PVC. Once you're fairly certain of that and you have them pre-drilled, we're just gonna set them down on the sides of the bed for the next step, we are going to be adding the plastic or depending on the time of year and what you're using this for, the shade cloth or the netting. But because we're going into winter here, it's time for plastic. Now you wanna use a six mil plastic. This is a 10 foot by 25 foot roll and that will probably do two of these, but it's the only size roll they had. So, and then you also need some scissors. And we're gonna be liberal with this. So you wanna make sure it drapes down pretty far on both ends. I'd say it's safe to drape it all the way to the ground, not the top of the, the bed. And then you're gonna unwrap it. Now you just wanna make sure that the creases in the plastic are pretty much lined up with the PVC underneath. It's just gonna keep everything centered and lined up. Now what we're gonna do is use the furring strip to tighten these down. The first one is the least important. The last one is the most important. So you wanna make sure it lines up with the end of the, the frame. And then we're going to drill in the center. Make sure this is pushed all the way up against the PVC cap. Down to this end. Push it against that PVC cap. And then two more in the middle. One on each side. Okay, now we're gonna go to the other side line it up on the ends and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this plastic and pull it as tight as we can get it and then press it down this is to clamp it down and push it against the pvc keep it pressed against the pvc drill it in down here pull it tight really want it to be tight all the way across the arch Two in the center. Now we're gonna work on the ends. And what we're gonna do here is you're gonna pull down on the center. And then we wanna fold this as neatly as possible. So we're almost gonna do like a fan fold, one side behind the other. All right, once you've got that, I get our furring strip up here and press 
down and then pull. Push it right up against those PVCs in the corner. Drill it in. And here in the corner, pull that plastic out. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect to work. Now we'll do the other end. Now we are just going to cut this about an inch away from the furring strip. All right, the plastic is done. Now this structure we just built could be put on top of an in-ground bed, works well. Um, but if you're putting it on a raised bed, there's a couple things we can do to make it, uh, they're optional, but they can make it much easier, much nicer for you. One of the things you can do is put a three inch hinge or two or three inch hinges on the back side of the bed, screw it into the bed itself and then into the cover. And then to make this easy to open and close, a simple metal handle from Home Depot or any hardware store. And once you've got those three on there like that, you can simply raise and lower the bed. Now, another thing I did that's optional, but almost not, there's some times when you're gonna want this bed to be completely open, for instance, when you're planting it. And so I just took some eye bolts or screw eyes, pretty heavy duty ones, one in the base of the cover, one into the raised bed. I used some heavy cord, this is parachute cord. What happens is when you open this up now, It keeps it from flopping back and kind of messing up the, the plastic. The other thing you can do is in the early fall or the late spring when it's still cold at night, but in the daytime, if it's closed, it could heat up too much, is just to vent it. And all you need is just a scrap piece of wood or a brick, just lift it up, put it like that, and the weight of the, the lid or the roof holds that down. Now this can be used if you live in a mild winter climate, like I said, you can use bug netting or shade cloth. You could also use plastic for a couple of reasons, and that would be for a cold frame. Instead of starting your seeds indoors with heat mats and grow lights, as long as the nights are in the 40s, um, this is gonna keep them even 10 degrees higher than that at night. So you're gonna germinate those seeds. You're gonna be able to use the natural light of the sun rather than all that indoor mess that you may not like to use. Also, even if you're just going to be planting in this, you can keep this closed. And let's say we're coming into February, March. Using this, you can plant six weeks earlier, maybe eight, than in the ground. Because what this, when this is on here, you're heating up the soil inside this raised bed. And that soil is gonna be way warmer than an in-ground bed. Or if you put this over an in-ground bed, the ground under that is going to be warmer than the surrounding area. So you're gonna be able to plant much sooner in the spring than you, than you would otherwise. So I hope you follow this. Again, all the part lists are in the description below. I'm also going to link the uh, video on how to make these raised beds very simply. I'll also link it right here. So definitely give that a click and find out what to do first before you build your lid. See you next time.